Okay. Uh, we get this. We get Storm's psycho uh, gaze. And we get Wolverine just being an asshole and just ashing his little cigar on Marrow's plant, which looks like a, a weed, you know, like some mushrooms or something. But he's just ashing on it like an asshole. I don't like that. That's not cool. And also, here's the thing about Marrow. She may talk a lot of crap, but she backs it up, okay? She ain't scared of Wolverine. She's like, you ain't nothing to me. Like, I will bust your ass. Uh, <laughs> also, in a, then we get a really uh, a cutaway from to Jerusalem, where we get Gabrielle Hollett, the baby mama of Charles Xavier, mother of Legion, David Hollett, aka. Uh, we get we get her uh, writing a letter trying to get Charles out of jail. Because because he turned himself in back in uh, issue fifty seven over the events of onslaught, and she gets approached by none other than the Israeli Captain America. The Israeli no wait it wouldn't be Captain America that's no it'd be Captain Israeli. Uh, Sabra, Rube. Boss, I don't, I probably got her, I got her name wrong. But she is a beast. She's such a beast. Um, then we cut, cut to Cannonball. Uh, he's trying, he's he's about to do the right thing. He's about to try to talk to Mero, welcome her to the team because nobody really has. They, everybody's kind of staying away from her based off of uh, Storm and Wolverine's hearsay. And Storm <clears throat> throwing her weight around saying, Oh, you don't know what it's like because you like you don't know Mero. It doesn't matter that she's coming here to try to better herself. I know what she really is. Like, wow. Storm is the epitome of a hypocrite. I mean, okay, seriously, Storm is an asshole because she had the because Callisto is her mistakes coming back to haunt her because we see what she's done with the Morlocks. She's a bad leader. Okay, she she won. She uh she won the uh the leadership of the Morlocks and did nothing with it. They were just like, "Oh, no, they're in the sewers. I live in a mansion." Yeah, we're not going to do anything about it. Well, I'm not going to let lead you into a revolution or anything. She didn't even give the give the leadership back to Callisto. <sighs> and yeah, Storm is really she's a hypocrite. And it all and it all comes back to Claremont cuz yeah. Also, we get this nice little uh this little bit with Beast and Joseph, aka the Magneto clone. I liked him. He was cool. Uh, he's not trying to say he's not trying to get anybody's drama. Like he's just trying to be cool with anybody's drama. Like he's just trying to be cool. And he's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, Cecilia Reyes and Maggot. I have a real soft spot for them because. Uh, they're X-Men of color. You don't really get a lot of those. The fact that Maggot's power is really interesting. Like, it's not a power you really see that much, and I think that's really cool. And the fact that uh, Cecilia Reyes' power is very reminiscent of a... Uh, it's a it's a passive power, kind of like Kitty Pride. But, you know, unlike, Cecilia, unlike uh, Kitty Pride. Cecilia Reyes is actually useful because she has, because she's a doctor. I don't know. The X Men can use a doctor. Uh, then we cut to the fight between Wolverine and Marrow. And here, Wolverine's just preaching, saying, Oh, you got to learn to focus that red. Da, 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 da. Really? You think anybody's going to listen to you? What the hell's wrong with you? Just talk. Shit. Uh, Meryl had some really good points. 
when she said that uh, the Morlocks, uh, they all they did, all they were, were victims. She's trying to raise them out into the light, and and Wolverine is so, he's so condescending. He said like, oh, the Morlocks had dignity, like. No, they were victims because every because when the Marauders came around, they were victims. They couldn't defend themselves. Wolverine doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. And it really seems like he doesn't know what he's talking about half the time because I hope it's because he's drunk, but I don't know. I think he's just dumb. He's just a dumb person. Then we cut back to Israel with my girl Sabra. She's ah, uh, she uh, she's dope. And her name is Ruth Batsarif. That's her. I'm trying to sound it out. And she's such, a, she's such a beast. Like she, like Sabra's one of those people who goes into problems head on. She's not like Captain America because Sabre's actually a mutant and she and her government's actually really okay with mutants. So I re I really want to see her on Krakoa. Or at the very least, like see how how's Israel um dealing with this. You know. Uh also we're seeing Sam we're seeing Sam getting his balls because yes he's been on the x-men for a minute and he's been kind of like the rookie because he's been starstruck because he's on the team and i get it but also now he's starting to realize like no no no, no. he was raised by cable he was told okay not that but he's like do what you want forget anybody forget anybody else and i love it uh, this, we cut to this Magneto storyline that goes nowhere. Like, apparently we're finding out that Magneto's name isn't Eric Lyncher, it's something else. Magnus. Whatever. Um, also, getting back into the Marrow Wolverine story. Really, though, it really just says that Storm, like, like, it reminds me of the Dion Warwick Wendy Williams situation. Mero is Dion Warwick like, why is Storm being such a bitch to me? Like, she's, it's like she started, now she acting like she can't finish. Like, Mero, Mero ain't like, Mero ain't no punk. Uh, also, the fact that um, Mero, I don't think she should have been with the X-Men at this time. I think she should have gone to Generation X. Because she's right around the same age. And Emma Frost would have done a lot to hold, like, she, she would have focused her rage. And also, Emma Frost at this time didn't like Storm. So they can just be, like, getting catty about Storm. Like, man, did you see Storm looking with her ashy ankles? Like, no. We get Wolf, and then we get Wolverine going at, uh, uh, Mara one more time and and like he's just he's being super condescending like oh I'm, you're gonna live like my way I'm your drill sergeant and she was like bitch by got him with got him with the bone in the throat <laughs> didn't see that one coming he thought he was so smart and you know what I don't care what anybody says Meryl got him Mero has beaten Wolverine clean. No help. Um, she's the only person that Wolverine can say he's never beaten. So, uh, there you go. We get more of uh, the uh, Magneto storyline that goes nowhere. It's just really cool to see uh, S S uh, Sabre's uh, power. I wish she was... I wish she was more into the X-Men mix, mix. At this time, I would have thought she would have been a really good fit for Excalibur, but uh, that's just me. Uh, 
Wolverine is a bad loser. Like, he goes beast mode. And then he gets slammed into the wall by Cannonball. I, I, I kind of feel like Cable somewhere is like, Sam's a good boy. He got him for me. <laughs> um, we get Storm trying to justify Wolverine's actions. And she can't. Mero runs away, goes to see Callisto. And we get this. Okay, maybe this is just me, but I never watched Fargo. Like, so, like, I don't know. Maybe because I'm black, I just didn't watch Fargo. I, n I don't get that movie. So, whatever. All in all, this was a really good story for Marrow and Wolverine. Like, it was something that was building up, and, like, we knew it was coming. And instead of Storm versus Marrow, we got Wolverine versus Marrow. And Wolf Marrow came out looking like a champ. Like, she may, she doesn't care what other people think. She She's seen how humanity really is. I mean, she's dope. I felt like she deserved to be on the X-Men team. Uh, she deserved another chance. Or at the very least, put her in a book. I mean, like, Marauders would be really cool. Hellions would be interesting, considering, her, like, you know, Grey Crow. But all in all, these two issues, to me, they, they, have, a little, they have a nice little uh, place in my heart. I'm giving them both four and a half out of five stars. The art's on point, the story's on point, the characterization's on point. I loved it. Just up and down. So, if you have a classic review, uh, uh, throw it in the comments. Let's get a conversation going. Is Storm right? And, and is Wolverine a bitch? Okay. This is 1407 Gray Malkin Lane, signing out.